Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. As you know by the title of this video, I'm gonna be talking about my July favorites. July was a month for sure. We're gonna get into it, but I'm gonna be showing you all of the makeup products that I gravitated towards. We're gonna to be going over whether or not I journaled, my favorite handbag, my favorite shoes, clothing, nail polish that I wore the most. I also love how every time I film my monthly favorites video, I have no nail polish on. So I wear nail polish, I promise. I just am not wearing nail polish in this video. So let's hop into it. I did just want to mention my everyday sunscreen has still been Dr. Dennis Gross SPF 50. This is the ultimate defense. I do use this every day and then the days that Mike and I are down the shore or when I go to the beach I use the La Roche Posay SPF 50 that comes in like that little squeezy tube. You guys have seen it. I've used it here on my channel before. I don't love that one simply because it migrates into my hairline and it gives me a white cast in my hair. This goes on white however you can blend it in really nice and as you can see there is no white cast on my skin. I'm just nice and dewy. I mentioned an eye cream in my June favorites. I thought I was using it wrong however I used it correctly this month. The Beauty Stat Universal C Eye Perfector Vitamin C with L-absorbic acid. I tried this again this month. I used it the way that it was intended. Ended up looking like I had eczema in my eyes. I am trashing this but I just wanted to mention that I tried this. If you're thinking about trying this one of my subscribers also had the same kind of reaction so buyer beware. I have been trying this new eye cream Rodeal Dragon blood eye gel. It's to hydrate and tone. It does not irritate my eyes. It does a nice job of moisturizing. I really enjoy the pump. I'm just to the point where I'm looking for an eye cream to not break me out or irritate my skin. I had like flakes of skin hanging off of my eyes. I figured to take the flakes of skin off, I needed to exfoliate my skin. However, my eyes were so achy. I just, I had to let the flake eyes fly. I felt a little insecure, honestly, which I've been feeling a lot lately. I feel like July was not a great month for me during the height of the summer. For the past few years, I've kind of gone through this weird mental health, anxiety, like sadness. And I don't know what it is, but July really painted that picture. I was a little unenthused and I was a little unmotivated. I'm loving this Laneige lip sleeping mask. I feel bad that for the longest time I told you guys you didn't need it, but I don't know what it is. Just it plumps my lips and it makes them look huge. So I don't know if you could see, but these are my lips before. I mean, I did just put some on, but if you give it a bit of time to sink into the lips, it literally looks like I went and got my lips just like plumped a little bit. This is the same damn concealer I have been using for what feels like a lifetime now, Backstage by Dior. I still have my little makeup bag that I bring to and from work with me. I'm just gonna stamp this into the skin. This is really all the coverage that I've been wearing on my face. Just very natural. I feel like my skin has been in such a good spot. And if you've been with me for a bit now, you know that I had such a bad flare up around my mouth. It was right after Mike and I had gone on two of our vacations, which him and I desperately need a vacation. I keep saying this to him. Like I just feel so burnt out. I have no motivation to do anything. I think it had a lot to do with my diet. And so I've gotten in a really good space with my skin. I really haven't been drinking a lot this summer, like at all. I've been I haven't even really been drinking wine. Maybe that is contributing to my sadness. I don't know. I honestly forgot that I even owned this, but I did a vanity declutter in my last vlog. I was reminded that I had this. So this is the Patrick Ta for face. She sculpted. Real Techniques Expert Face Brush. This brush I only use with this product. The clips always look crazy in my hair. Dip into the cream. And I like to start underneath my jawline cheeks and I do a stamping motion on my face. But I just feel like this color looks really natural. It always looks natural but I feel like even so now that I have a, a bit of color. I love to be outside but I like to hide in the shade so I don't really tan but I do have a bit of color for me. I go from white to light beige but I feel like this color is really natural and I feel like this product may look a bit intimidating but it's not. I kind of think of it as a bronzer. Gives a really natural contour shade that kind of just looks like bronzer. And that is the bronzer on. I mean, technically it's contour. If you own this and you're wondering how the heck you use this, it can look a little intimidating, but it's not. It is very natural as you can totally see. You use the cream contour, you lay that down just like I lay it down. And then you would take like a fluffier brush like this and apply the powder bronzer on top. What that does is it just kind of like cements or seals the cream product so that your makeup lasts longer, especially in the heat. Cream blush, I mix it up a bit this month and I am back onto my OG rose quartz 
quartz sculpted face stick. I don't like to go in with the stick because it will move your makeup. So I like to just twist it up, pick it up with a brush and then apply it. But this is like, look at that color. It's such a pretty color. So natural. It honestly like matches the natural flush of my skin. So I like to keep it in the back and then I like to pull it into the crease. And I kind of connect the two in this sort of like C shape. And then whatever's left over, I put on the bridge of my nose. How pretty is that? Don't I look like I was just in the sun? This is boring. I myself, I can't imagine how you feel, but I myself, I'm sick of seeing myself use this Givenchy Prism Libre, but it's just the best. It's just simply the best. Let me see, do we need a little light in here? Is that better? Is that worse? I never know. I feel like sometimes, sometimes it's too much and you can't see, but I'm going to be honest, I'm having trouble seeing right now. So I'm going to pick this up and just set my face as I normally do. Blush that I'm back on. I honestly, again, forgot that I owned this. ZC, it's in Chinese, so I don't know exactly what it is, but can you see, it's like a cute little cat. It's this really pretty coral blush. And I'm gonna take that with my hourglass brush. I'm not particular, I kind of just go in the whole thing. And I just, can you see how that adds just like a glow? to the face, whereas this side, it looks a little patchier. It's like a spring summer kind of blush because it has like the corally pinks. It's so pretty. That orange, oh my God, it's simply stunning. And it looks really good with my dress. We'll get to the fashion portion of this video towards the end. There's no better powder bronzer than the NARS Laguna. I feel like a broken record, but every time someone asks me which bronzer I recommend, I always say this bronzer. And I'll show you one side of my face as opposed to the other side. Can you see how this side just, it, look how natural that looks now. I just look naturally sun-kissed. It doesn't look like makeup. I am going to power through this. I will fast forward me doing my brows, but I have been brushing them up with a spoolie like this. Anastasia Beverly Hills, this is the brow pomade in medium brown brush with the spoolie on one side and then the angled brush on the other side. I'm gonna put the light on because I can't see. This is also like, I would say kind of an intimidating product. However, it's really light. It kind of goes on like a powder. And if you put too much on, like I don't know if you could see right there, I put a bit too much. You can just use the spoolie to help blend it out. Can you see the difference? It just, it looks freakishly natural. Oh, I just like royally messed up. Of course, that's what you get. I can fix this and I shall fix this. Those are just some bushy brows. Mm, I dipped that too much. Exactly when I say it's not that serious, it becomes serious even though it's really not that serious, it's only makeup. Take my spoolie and I'm just gonna run this along to kind of clean up around the edges. I'm gonna put a lid on this. I don't think I need any more of that product. And now I'm gonna take my concealer brush and further kind of just clean up the edges. This might be a terrible idea considering I have a lot of product on my brows, but I need to keep it true to what I use this month. And I use the BB Brow Pencil, the BB Brow Pencil by Araceli. I use Blonde. I just feel like you have a bit more control with a skinny little pencil like this than you do a brush. I kind of just go over the top of my brow, just where I need to like round things out a bit. And I like to use the blonde, not only because it's softer, but also because it adds a bit of dimension. It looks kind of like one dimensional, whereas this kind of makes it three dimensional or like two dimensional. I don't know. I don't know anything about dimensions. I just know that this looks more natural. I feel like your best utensil other than your fingers is to just constantly be using whatever you apply your concealer with. And I didn't pick up any product as you saw. I kind of just use whatever's on the brush to help soften and reshape things. But my God, the brows are a bushy. I feel like my eyes look a little bit small right now. They're kind of just like floating on my face and not a part of the rest of me. So I've been using, again, this is another ZC product. I will try and find it and link it down below. I bought this on Amazon a really long time ago. You don't need this. I'm just gonna take this shade right here. Tapered blending brush, this is Scott Barn 62. You don't need this, just something that goes to a point. I start above my pupil. Can you see where I put that? And then I go in and I go out. I'm kind of just framing my eye. Can you see? It just like adds a bit of dimension to the eye and makes the eye kind of look softer. And like it blends in with the rest of my face, does it not? If you can see a difference, let me know down below. Again, if you need to blend, you can always blend a little bit more with your finger. And then I kind of just put it all over the lid. 
This is in the shade Nepal. It's just a really pretty pink. I, can you tell this is like the aesthetic? I've been really loving pink and I've been really loving browns, but I just like to add a little bit of, it's not really sparkly. It's kind of just like a satin. Can you see? It just, it's not glittery. It adds a wash of light color to the lid and a wash of just like sparkle so that my eye pops. You don't need to be precise. I kind of just threw that all over the lid and called it a day. I used two eyeliners a lot this month. Araceli, again, I love Araceli, the Ojos Perfectos Gel Pencil in Sangria. It's like this really pretty rose gold shade. The other one that I wore is Charlotte Tilbury in Pillow Talk, which looks great with my brown eyes. On the days that I want a little bit more depth, a little bit more oomph, I like to use pillow chalk, but I'm, again, I'm keeping it really simple. So I'm just lining my lid and I'm not gonna wing it out. I'll show you the difference between the two eyes. Kinda ends up looking more like eyeshadow, which you could do this with eyeshadow. You could just take a darker eyeshadow and put it along the edge of your eye. But I just lightly line the eye and I like to bring it into the inner corner. And then I like to put some in the waterline. But that's all that I do. Can you see the difference between the two? It just makes my eye sparkle a little bit more and it brings a bit more attention. But you can't really tell that I'm wearing eyeliner and this is just my favorite way to wear eyeliner lately. I don't know. I'm not really into cat eyes. I look back on old videos of myself. I don't know, it's weird. Like I look happier with a lighter makeup and I hope that you can see the difference. Again, if you can see the difference, let me know down below in the comments. I would love to hear. It's so subtle, but honestly, I always say this with makeup, the little details make the biggest difference. I found this Anastasia Beverly Hills, the Amrezi highlighter. I love ABH products and I love this highlighter. I'm sad that it is discontinued. However, you can find this in a similar shade. It's just a very pretty champagne gold that just looks wet on the skin. And I kind of just go all underneath my brows just to lift the brows and give a bit of, can you see how pretty that is? Underneath my brow and especially on my brow bone. I just give a little bit of shimmer. Look how pretty as opposed to this. Like that's still pretty because my skin's just dewy from my skincare, but I like to just enhance the dew. And I put this here, which I think makes the biggest difference, just right on the inner corner of my eye. Can you see how my eye just kind of pops? I don't like highlighter in the sense that I don't like to put highlighter here. I kind of just like that. Like I don't need any more than that. That's a lot going on already. I also do like to put a bit in between my brows, just like that, Cupid's bow. But that's where I like to add highlighter. I don't like to add highlighter on the tops of my cheeks. Look at that though. Mm. I'm gonna use the Sky High by Maybelline, my favorite drugstore mascara. This is the wand, in case you're interested in what it looks like. And that's one coat. I feel like that went on chunkier than it normally does. This month I wore two lip combos excessively. I love this lip gloss. This is my favorite lip gloss. If I can only, if I was on an island and I can only choose one lip product, this would be the lip product. This is the NYX Fat Lip Oil in Newsfeed. I wear this when I'm wearing makeup. When I'm not wearing makeup, this is just an everyday staple in my life. Honestly shocked that I still have any of this product left. It's just a really pretty, like juicy. It hydrates my lips really nicely. I talk about this all the time. This is another one that's great. This is the e.l.f. I think they're like the Glow Revivals and this is in the shade Rose Envy. It's peachier. So this is NYX, which is a cool toned pink. And then you have Rose Envy, which is a beautiful peachy tone. The lip liner that I wore with both of these lip oils the most is the Koki Warm Nude. Such a good color beautiful shade. This was a find and you might not count this as a lip combo because it's not really for your lips, but this month I discovered that using my Gucci brow pencil as a lip liner, this is the best lip liner I own and it's not even a lip liner. I can't even see because it's so faded. I've honestly had this for a really long time. My eyebrow products have really leveled up and this just is not it anymore, but it is just a really dark brown. And you might think that that will look insane on my lips, but I think because it's a brow pencil and it's not meant for your lips, you're gonna see gives a contour effect I use really, really light pressure and you can see it's not nearly as dark as it is on the back of my hand. But I love this, not only for the color, but also the formula. It's so, it's like a stiff pencil, which is my favorite when it comes to lip liners. Not my favorite when it comes to brow pencils, which is probably why I don't love it for brows anymore. And I like to just blend it in a bit. I'm gonna take my Maybelline Lifter Gloss, this color, oh my God. And it looks 
even better after you've worn it for a bit of time and the color has kind of just sunk into your lips. All right guys, and that is the finished makeup look. Let me know, what do we think down below in the comments? We're not done yet. I still have a bunch of other products to get through, but I don't know. I just think like the brown tones, the peachy tones. I didn't do the color analysis. I have no idea what colors I am. Um, cause I feel like every time those filters pop up on TikTok or Instagram, wherever they are, I can't tell the difference. Like I feel like I look terrible with all of them, but I just feel like these kind of makeup tones and I think my hair tone complements my overall like skin. I think my brows look more natural. I think my eyes pop a bit more. I just think that I finally have found my aesthetic. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Maybe I'm crazy, but this is the skin. I just, I'm back into the juicy, peachy peachy pink vibes, brown vibes, um, and I do, I really, I know I like messed up on the brows and I might edit this back and think that they look absolutely insane. I like the bolder brow, I don't know, and I'm really into this dip brow. If you watched my recent vlog, I mentioned the R & Co Palm Springs. It's like a pre-shampoo mask. I didn't realize, and I do apologize, but when I went to go tag it, in the description of my video, I noticed that it was no longer sold, and so that's okay. Basically, what the pre-mask, the pre-shampoo mask does is it protects the end of your hair from getting too dry. The further your hair is from your scalp, the drier it is, which is why we get split ends, and typically, if you touch your hair, it's the driest at the bottom. So what I do when I get in the shower is I wet my hair, and I condition my hair first. It makes such a big difference. I wet my hair, and then I use my Paul Mitchell Clean Beauty Conditioner. I'll let that sit in my hair for a minute, and then I go in with my first shampoo. I also shampoo my hair twice in the shower and I now condition my hair twice in the shower. I will take my Paul Mitchell tea tree shampoo and I will scrub the top of my head. I will take my head and put it under the shower and kind of just wash my hair up top. Basically what that layer of conditioner does at the bottom of your hair, it creates a shield around your strands so that when you go to wash out your shampoo, think about it, when you wash out your shampoo, the shampoo runs down your hair and shampoo is very drying. When the shampoo runs down here, it kind of just falls over the conditioner and your hair doesn't have the chance to really absorb that shampoo. I use another Paul Mitchell shampoo. I will link my hair care link where you can purchase everything that I buy. I literally get everything off of Amazon. I will link that down below. I wash my hair again and then condition last using this Kerastase Chroma Absolute. I use a very bit of this. I find that I really like this. It makes my hair shiny and it makes my hair really soft, but if I use too much, it weighs down my hair and it makes my hair greasy. So I take like the idiotic bit of this. I just take my hair to one side. I go like this on the ends scrunch my hair like we used to do back in the day and then I put it behind my head I wash my body I shave my legs and that has been my new conditioning and shampoo routine give it a try let me know what you think basically I condition shampoo shampoo condition my hair isn't as crazy frizzy like it's still frizzy but it's not as manically frizzy as it used to be and it's so much softer another hair care product that i tried well i purchased this this month when i was at shop right with mike i bought the hask argan oil it's a hair oil i love hask i was using one for the longest time i forgot what it's called but it smells like summer it smells like coconut and pina coladas it just smells so good it does a really good job of masking like maybe how grimy your hair smells because you don't wash it very often. This doesn't smell like anything. It smells like nothing. It is argan oil though, and argan oil is known to really help condition your hair. So I put this on the ends of my hair the night before I wash my hair just because my hair does get oily pretty quickly, especially because now that I'm brunette, my hair isn't nearly as dry as it was when I was blonde. I feel meh about it. Again, I feel like my hair is softer, but I really liked how amazing that other one smelled. My battery died and I put a little bit of light on because I felt like it was getting a little bit dark. So I do apologize if it looks a little bit different, but let's move on to other things quickly because I feel like I've been talking for a lifetime. I finish this perfume. I will definitely buy this again. Joe Malone, Poppy and Barley. This reminds me of Italy because I bought a travel size when Mike and I went on our honeymoon and this is what I wore the entire trip. And so every time I smell this, I transport in time back to Venice, Rome, Florence, Positano, Tuscany. I am now running really low on my Gucci Bloom, so I feel like that will be the perfume that I mentioned in my August favorites because I'm kind of that person where when I feel that it's running low, I kind of just want to get rid of it. I've had a lot of chats this past month, so I feel like this is no surprise to those of you who frequent my channel often. I love shopping, but I kind of feel a little bit overwhelmed by all the hauls that are going on throughout TikTok, throughout YouTube. I feel like every time I open YouTube, I'm just slapped in the face with like designer hauls, and I cannot say that I'm innocent. I'm 
definitely guilty if you guys watched my last video where I bought two things from Fendi and I did an unboxing like I am guilty kind of just want to go on a no buy so I think in August I'm not buying anything unless it is a necessity and in my next video in my vlog I think I'm gonna declutter my skincare and my hair care closet so if you're interested in that make sure you're subscribed I feel anxious I feel like there's a lot of clutter and so I'm just trying to get through things and with my perfume I feel good about it because I kind of just want to get to a point where I run out of everything and then I can just start from the beginning I kind of want to do that with my skincare and I kind of want to do that with my makeup like Lord knows I don't need any more makeup I just want to be a little bit more minimalistic when it comes to everything that is my mission for August and September is to kind of just minimize and make my space feel more comfortable and livable and less cluttered and anxious for the months where I spend more time inside which is you know the, the winter times. I so. bought this Calzedonia of course it's inside out it is just literally this like linen blend oversized t-shirt it's a cover-up I absolutely love this I just find that like this summer has been so unbearably hot and I would normally go to the beach with like cut off jean shorts and a tank top but it's like even too hot for that I have to say I kind of talked a little bit of smack about my Goelia haul because I said if I had really thought about it and read what they're made out of like let's see what does this one consist of they're made in china and i feel some type of way about that i don't know i just i might sound silly but i think like when things are made in china it makes me just think that they're like mass produced if i'm in the store and i'm shopping in real life okay i look and if i see that it's made in china i'm gonna be 100 percent honest with you i don't buy it you can educate me if i need to be educated we can have a conversation about it but that's just how i feel and i'm telling you how i feel this one isn't bad this one is 61% cotton, polyester, poly mead, and wool. This is a knit. It's very luxe looking. They're affordable. And I really just like that it's cropped. Well, it's not cropped. It hits me perfectly. I'm 5'2", so it hits me right at my waist. I like that it's short sleeve, so I can wear it in the warmer months. Honestly, I work in an office and it's cold in the office. So what I do is I fold this and I like that it doesn't wrinkle because it's a knit. So I fold this, I throw it in my backpack, I, I walk to work, commute to work, and then when I get there, I take this out of my bag and I throw it on and it just kind of like elevates any outfit. So I really like this one. And then this is the, I've honestly been wearing all of them, but these two I've been wearing the most. This is 100% acetate and polyester. I would not buy this had I had seen this in the store, but I didn't really look up the specs when I was shopping. I was just shopping, to be honest. And I just, I like the gold details. It's just, it's, it looks like linen, but it's not linen. And again, this one's a little bit lighter, so I can wear this on even warmer days. Great for real life. I just, I wear this all the time. I wear both of these all the time. I've been loving these like kitten heels from Vince. I don't know what it is. They're so comfortable. I really do think that they elevate any and all of my outfits. I've just been walking around in these. They're so comfortable. I absolutely love them. I can't get enough of this bag. This is my bag of the summer. You know I have this in this color. You know I have this in the white color. I love how big this bag is. I love that I can like fit my life in it. Gianni Chiarini. I talk about Gianni Carini all the time, but their bags are in like the premium price range where they range from like $250 to like $500. And I think that this was around the $300 mark. In August, there are quite a few things that I would like to do. I would like to really focus on happiness, being a bit more present. Like I said, I just feel like this month I was a little bit all over the place. I think I'm going to stop scrolling on social media as much. Mike and I were actually talking this morning about how we kind of want to come up with a time where it's like a cutoff. 8.30, we're going to stop being on our phones and then nine o'clock I think we're gonna just stop with TV and all of that all together maybe we'll just like read I've been reading more which is exciting I'm currently reading Summer Sisters which was recommended to me by my friend here Faith I'm really loving the book always enjoy like a coming of age book I've loved the um, Candace Bushnell all of her book series I've always been such a fan I love Sex in the City my favorite book that I've read this year so far has been Remember to Write which is a coming of age book about this girl who is turning 18 and she goes and she stays with her aunt and it's just she falls in love for the first time and it's just I don't know I find comfort in that summer sisters is very much about that it's basically without giving it away it's about like two girls who spend the summer together they become best friends and one girl is from a family who has money and this other girl is from a family who doesn't have money an overview of what it's like for the both of them to grow up their different perspectives it's really interesting I'm almost halfway done with the book hopeful that I will finish it in the next week or two it's one of those books that I really I'm just I can't put it down I have a list of books that I'm gonna read next and I will let you guys know whichever one I pick as soon as I finish the one that I'm reading you remember this notebook that I showed you 
okay? I showed you this notebook in my June favorites and was like hopefully by the end of this month I will have an array of pages to show you that I've journaled in now. I literally journaled once. I journaled once. It was on 6 30 which I'm pretty sure was the day that I uploaded my June favorites. I wrote one page. I'm hoping to get back into it. I'm making the commitment to myself. I'm doing a Sydney Cummings summertime fine which is a three-month fitness program. I'm on her last tier and I only have nine days left as of today. I am just unmotivated. I think I'm just like really burnt out and I think I'm stressed out and I think my anxiety is on like a whole new level and I just have the summertime blues. I'm trying to not feel like down and out about it. Like I'm trying to hone in on the being proud because that's a long time, like three months. That's a long commitment and I've only missed one workout because it was a Monday and I had my period and I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna allow it and I don't feel bad about it. I feel like that's pretty impressive. Like I'm impressed. I'm just, I'm not feeling motivated and I'm hoping to get in a better headspace in August. I'm wearing a lot more jewelry this month because I was like, I'm sad and I need a pick me up and we all know how much I love jewelry. This was a new purchase. Mike bought this for me this month. How ironic. Look, the evil eye is sitting on my evil eye. This is a new addition to my stack. Now I've had this nail bracelet for a really long time now, but I did take it off and I decided to put her back on. I have been wearing this diamond bracelet that Mike bought me quite a few Christmases ago when him and I were dating. This never comes off my wrist. My love bracelet that never comes off my wrist either. I showed you guys this last month, but my Van Cleef Cornelius? Cornelia? I always mess up the name, but it's the red one. But honestly, it's like a kind of like a ready orange shade. And then this is one that I started wearing often this month. I haven't worn this in a really long time. Fendi Bangle. Now, I don't recommend buying designer jewelry because it's costume jewelry. It's not worth the money, to be honest, because it's not real gold. But this has been my stack. I love the pops of color that are incorporated now between the Evil Eye and the Van Cleef. This has been like my summer necklace, but this is the only necklace that I've been wearing. It has the Italian horn and the Maloika. I always call it that because that's what my grandma calls it. So Italians will do this if they feel like, you know, they're giving you bad juju or like, you know, when people are jealous and they wish bad things upon you, it's the Italian version of the evil eye. And if you don't know, the horn is a representation of good fortune, good luck. I feel like this necklace has really become a piece of me. It's cool though, because this is a chain that Mike bought me. My parents bought me the horn. And then I bought myself this little Malika, different locations, different times. It's just, it's very special to me. My rosary bracelet that Mike bought me in Positano. You guys have seen this like so many times, but I just wear this with my watch. I really want to stop wearing my Apple watch. It's nice because it tells me to stand up when I've been lazy all day. Like when I've been sitting here for three hours filming, I'll be like, lady, it's time to stand up. I also don't like that it keeps me on track. I find comfort in not knowing or being in the know sometimes. I'm playing a lot more with my earrings. For a few months there, I would only wear the diamond studs that Mike bought me. Granted, I still wear them a lot. In my first hole, I have been wearing these Italian golds. I bought them on Gilt. They're like really hollow. They weigh next to nothing, but I think they're for 14 karat gold earrings. I will find them and link them down below. So those are in my first hole. And then I've been wearing these Amazon earrings. I went on my Amazon storefront and I saw that quite a few of you bought this earring. Fake diamonds, okay? Fake gold, it's not real gold, but then it's a heart with a little turquoise evil eye in it. I just think it's so cute. It kind of looks like a guitar pick too. I just like it, I think it's fun. And then I've been wearing this earring over here. I think my mom got this from Blue Nile. She bought me this for Christmas and it has diamonds and then just like gold little balls. It's so cute. I love it and it's really comfortable. I can sleep in it. Basically the same rings I always wear. I have my David Yurman cable knit pinky ring, Cartier Panther ring that Mike bought me for Christmas, Mike's communion ring. His parents bought him this. It has his initials, MVD on it. It's just a signet ring. I have my Cartier Clash. So these are all the same. But then on this hand, I was going through my collection pulling pieces that are newer to my collection so that I can talk about them in my upcoming jewelry collection video. I've been wearing this shamrock ring. I don't know, it's sterling silver, adds a pop of color. I like a very neutral wardrobe with pops of color in my jewelry or my handbags. That's just been my vibe lately, engagement ring and my wedding ring. And that's been the jewelry, my friends. Oh, wait, no, it hasn't. These are the earrings that I've been wearing the most. These are fake YSL earrings that I bought at a street fair that I literally stumbled upon when I went to go pick up lunch one day when I was working at the office. Look at these earrings. They're so cute. Love how lightweight they are. Let me put them in for you. They go really well with my new brown hair. I'm just, I'm living in my brown era. It's a brown aesthetic. Look at those. They're so freaking cute. I love them because they're like an oblong shape. I don't know. They're so fun. I get so many compliments on them. And like I said, I just feel like they really, they match my hair. Company that I bought them from, I know that they do sell online. So I will try and find them and link them down below. But let me go ahead and just put my hoop back in. Also, 
I almost forgot. This was definitely my most worn nail polish. You guys know I love OPI. This is in the shade You've Been Red. It's like Cajun shrimp on steroids. I absolutely love it. Those were all of my July favorites. Do be sure to let me know down below in the comments. What were some of the things that you loved in July? Was there anything that you hated in July? What did you do in July? Any like mental health tips? What are you looking forward to in August? Are you gonna concentrate on something? Is there something you wanna achieve? Are there any goals? I just, I wanna talk. I wanna feel motivated because I'm not feeling motivated. So maybe if you tell me about your motivations and what you're looking forward to, I will borrow some of your motivation and maybe use that to get some of the things that I highlighted in this video that I would like to get done. I love you guys so much. As always, thank you so much for hanging out with me and I really hope to see you in my next one. Bye guys. Mm.